Today on Mackie Tech, we're taking a first look at Zorn OS 18 Beta, which was released September 18th, 2025. And this is actually ideal timing due to Windows 10 support ending in just a few weeks on October 14th. I have done a few videos walking through some of the best options to prepare for Windows 10's retirement, covering updates, Linux alternatives, and everything in between that I will leave in the video description as well as where to download the Zorn OS 18 beta. And by the way, if you're new here and you like ramblings about Linux, single board computers, and general home lab stuff, make sure you hit subscribe so you don't miss out on any upcoming videos. And just to be clear, Windows 10 will still work as normal after October 14th, but Microsoft won't be officially supporting it, meaning that you won't receive any further security updates or tech support. Of course, you do have the option of purchasing a one-year of Microsoft's Extended Security Updates, or ESU, for a one-time purchase of $30, but this will only cover you for important security updates not technical support. So before we get too crazy, just a, a PSA that this is a beta of Zorin 18. It's not recommended for production use or to replace your current daily driver. So unless you're a nerd like me who has more computers in their home than clean underwear, maybe test it on a virtual machine as I demoed in a video for using VirtualBox on Windows. You can also test the OS by booting it from a USB drive where Zorn will not be installed on your system. If you do have a trusted safe environment for the full installation of Zorin 18 Beta, it's similar to previous versions as well as most Linux distros where you would first select your keyboard layout, set up a user account, and select your location. Once installed, Zorn welcomes you to a helpful walkthrough showcasing its new interface, desktop customization, new apps, and linking online accounts, all of which we will get into. So let's take a look at Zorn 18 Beta and why this release would be a great option if you're looking for an excuse to finally leave Microsoft. Okay, so here we are. We're going to take a look at Zorin 18 Beta compared to Zorin 17.3. On the left side, we have our little mountain range with the clouds. This is going to be our Zorin 18 beta. And then over on the right with the orangish background is going to be Zorin 17.3. And don't worry about these little tabs. That's just for my virtual machine. So the first and foremost thing that I notice is that the toolbar down at the bottom here is more rounded. If we look at the 17, it's uh, kind of just a rectangle, whereas this is going to be more rounded. Also, we have a new workspace indicator here, so we can switch between our respective desktop tops if we want to, which was uh, not present on Zorn 17.3. The settings app got a nice new overhaul, and we have the appearance indicator here which allows you to customize the look and feel. If we go to Zorn 17.3 and go to settings, we do not have the appearance here. So we have to go back to the menu option and then click on appearance. So it's nice to have it right here where I would have assumed it would be in the other versions. If we look at the file managers of each version on 18 where we are here, we have a files sidebar with uh, option menu here for new windows and new tabs as well as other preferences. And we can search with this little search bar here. In 17.3, we don't have that. We just have this sidebar unless it's moved somewhere else. So a little bit of uh, subtle updates that are always welcome. Also with 18 beta, we can, you can see that as I'm trying to drag the window around, I have this nice little uh, multitasking uh, windows management where I can pop this window into one of the predefined areas whereas Zorin 17.3 doesn't really have anything like that. So with 18 you can manage them much more, much more easily and have a more of a desktop feel and a much better environment to do your multitasking. This is definitely easier than working with Windows or Mac. I was just in my Windows a little while ago trying to manage a dual screen and uh, this is much easier. Also if we go under Zorin appearance the new added theme colors are yellow and then there's one for brown and if we go back into the file manager as an example you can see that now my folders are brown and my 
menu highlights are going to be more of a brownish theme. In addition, if you choose to upgrade to Zorin Pro 18, you'll get three new desktop layouts like the compact panel to maximize screen space, the Linux Mint inspired green layout, and the layout themed for elementary OS for a more of a cleaner, minimalistic style, if that's your thing. If we switch over to apps and I type in camera, we have a new camera app that I don't have a camera hooked up to, but it's a replacement for 17.3, what's called cheese, which is a little bit different, little bit different layout. And I have not tested these or messed around with them, but it is a newer uh, version of the cheese app that's been improved. So what I really liked on this new version is web apps, which is a feature allowing you to access your favorite websites from a single app versus having to open a web browser, hunt through a bunch of bookmarks. I do have a couple here that I've already set up. But to set up a new web app, all you do is you click on the Zorn menu down here and type in web app, web, uh, W as in web, and then web apps will pop up. And all you do is you click on this little plus sign, give it a name, Amazon, description, shopping, and address, www.amazon.com. And what's kind of cool is that it'll already give you an icon. If you want, you can click on this and you can get other options for the icon if you wish. Alternatively, you can click on this little option here. You have a plethora of different categories and emojis and different themes that you want for your special icon if you want to run through them all. You can also select your own custom icon if you have a picture you want to put on there. After you've specified the address in the address bar or the IP address, whichever one, you select a category like web, or you can also use internet, accessories, game, whichever. You can specify a browser if you want. I only have Brave browser installed, but you can also put Chrome in there or Firefox. And you can also opt to market incognito if you wanna go through life anonymously. After all that, you click on OK. And there is our Amazon web browser. We just click on this little icon here, the launch button, and it launches it. Now this is actually not in a browser, which is interesting. It's uh, just its own little window. We close that out. And if we want to make any changes to any one of these, just click on the app in question and click on this little pencil to edit, and then you can make your changes. To delete them, you just click on this little mono sign and it says you want to delete it and you say delete. One of the things that I was thinking here is that it might be nice if you had a section for a login, uh, kind of an account password, a name, but then you're storing your credentials in the app. And I'm not sure if that's super secure, so maybe not a great idea. Uh, what do you guys think? Leave me, uh, let me know your thoughts in the comments. So getting back to our point about switching over from Windows, if we go to the, to the Zorn menu and click on settings and then click on online accounts, we now have a Microsoft 365 as well as Microsoft OneDrive directly integrated into Zorin 18, which is very nice. So we would just select our M365 plus OneDrive, and then we would click on this sign in, and then it will launch a window where you would sign in to your account. And then after you sign in, and then it's over on the left-hand side of our file browser where we have all of our documents and all of our folders on our OneDrive, which is very nice. Zorn 18 OS also makes it easier to handle Windows apps. It recognizes over 170 different Windows installer files, which is up from 150 on its previous versions. So as an example, here is a Microsoft Office EXE setup file that I downloaded, and this is specifically for Windows. So it's not gonna run here. But if I double click on it, it will suggest a alternative like LibreOffice, which is already installed, or it will launch it on the web. And if I try to click on run anyway, it does have what's called wine or bottles that are installed, which is sort of a translator within Linux that can handle certain Windows applications. So that is the majority of what I wanted to show on the demonstration. So let's get back and talk about what else is available. So Zorin 18 brings a ton of practical upgrades that really polish the experience. Performance has been optimized across the board, so everything feels faster and more responsive. Again, since this is a beta, Zorin does value our feedback. So if you have suggestions or run into any issues, 
Just click the send option feedback icon on the dashboard to share your thoughts directly with the Zorin team. So who is sold on Zorin 18 beta? Is this the catalyst you need to finally switch from Windows? If not, what would it take? What else is missing? Let me know in the comments of what you liked or didn't like and maybe want to see in a future update. Anyway, tech fans, that is a wrap for this video. If you enjoyed this overview and found it useful, please give a like or a shout out in the comments. As always, any and all feedback is always welcome, so don't be shy. If you haven't subscribed yet, please make sure you click on that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any upcoming videos. Lastly, make sure you drop by my Patreon page to check out my other detailed tutorials from my videos, as well as behind the scenes Mackie Tech footage. Thank you all again for watching and we'll be talking to you again very soon.